Ever wish you could like hit a reset button on your mood? You yeah. know, trade in that stress for like a surge of creativity just like that. I know what you mean. Well, today's deep dive, it might just hold the key. Ooh. We're tapping into this really fascinating world of awareness through movement. Okay. It's a way to use, honestly, very subtle shifts in your body. Okay. To unlock some really amazing changes in how you feel. Think of it like um, fine-tuning your inner instrument in a way. I like that. Now, I know I know what you're thinking. You're mm. thinking movement. The only thing I'm shifting right now is deadlines. Yeah. Right? But trust me on this. We're diving into a session with Diana Pereira. Okay. And she's got this really intriguing concept, this idea called the line of the heart. The line of the heart. I like mm -hmm. it already. Right. Yeah. So tell us more about this line of the heart. What is it? Well, what's so fascinating here is this whole idea that our hearts, they're more than just pumps, right? Right. We're yeah. talking about the heart brain. Mm -hmm. Literally, there are all these clusters of cells in our hearts that actually act like neurons. What? Yeah. They send these messages that directly affect our emotions. And Diana mentioned there are 40,000 of these cells. Whoa. Which is a staggering number when you actually stop and think about it. 40,000. Okay, that definitely got my attention. Right. No wonder we feel things so deeply in our chests. Right. So how does this line of the heart thing actually work? Well, Diana, she describes it as activating these, um, these pathways of energy in the body. And they're often called meridians. And they kind of like flow between the heart and the hands. And, you know, in many cultures, the heart, it's seen as this source of wisdom, of intuition. Yeah. So imagine, like, if we could literally tap into that intelligence through movement. Wow, that's powerful. Right. I'm starting to see why this is called awareness through movement. Yes. It's not just about, you know, stretching or exercising. Right. It's about, like, tuning into these very subtle sensations, these connections within our bodies mm -hmm. that we might not even realize are there. Precisely. And, you know, Moshe Feldenkrais, he was the one who actually developed this whole approach. He mm -hmm. was a f physicist and an engineer. So he really understood that our bodies, they're incredibly complex systems. It makes sense that he would come to this. Yeah. Even the smallest changes can have these huge ripple effects throughout the whole structure. It's about finding those leverage points, those really subtle adjustments that kind of unlock a greater sense of ease and flow. Okay, that makes sense. Instead of like forcing our bodies into a certain shape, it's more about like listening to them, right? Yes. Working with our bodies, not against them. Exactly. It's about gently inviting our bodies to explore new possibilities, you know, and then those ripple out into our emotional well-being, our creativity, even like our experience of joy. Okay, I am 100% on board with more joy, especially, you know, with the holidays coming up. Me too. But how do we actually do that? Like, how do we access this line of the heart? Well, why don't we guide our listener through some of the movements from the session? Okay. Even just a simplified version can be incredibly powerful. I'm up for it. Let's get moving. Okay, so first, just find a comfortable spot where you can lie down for a few minutes. And if it's possible for you, lie flat on your back to start. Got it. Close your eyes and just bring your attention inward. Like a mini vacation for my mind, I like it. Yes. Now, just notice where you feel your body making contact with the floor. Okay. So the back of your head, your shoulder blades, your hips, the backs of your legs, your heels. No need to change anything. Just observe the sensations that are already present. Okay, got it. Just noticing those points of contact. Yes. What's next? Now, bring your attention to your eyes. Imagine them gently sinking down towards the back of your skull. Okay. And if you feel any tension there, you can gently place your fingertips on your eyelids and just imagine squeezing the muscles around your eye sockets. Oh, yeah, I can feel that. My eyelids, they want to naturally squeeze tight when I do that. Exactly. Hold that gentle pressure for a few breaths. It's a great way to just release tension, especially if you, like most of us, spend a lot of time looking at screens. Screens. Oh, me. Never. Okay. okay. Holding. Holding. And now slowly release your fingertips and allow your eye sockets to open wide as if you were trying to touch your fingertips to your hairline. Wow. Just doing that, I can already feel a shift in my face, like my jaw. It's relaxing a little. That's the power of these subtle movements. They're working on multiple levels, even when we don't realize it. Now bring your attention to your jaw. If you feel any tightness there, gently bring your lips together as if you're about to give a little peck or a little kiss. Like a gentle pucker. Exactly. Hold that gentle pressure for a few breaths and then slowly release your jaw, feeling that space between your teeth widen. And again, observe. 
Do you notice any changes in your body? Perhaps a softening in your jaw, your neck, even your chest. It's amazing how interconnected these seemingly separate parts of our bodies truly are. It's true. I would have never thought that making a kissing face could relax my chest, but here we are. Now, keeping your eyes closed, gently allow them to move left and right inside your sockets like you're gazing at your inner ear on each side. Okay, done. Is there one direction that feels easier than the other? Maybe one side feels more restricted, like it requires more effort to turn that way? Interesting. Don't worry about forcing it. We're just bringing awareness to those habitual patterns. Interesting. Turning to the left actually felt a bit easier than turning to the right. Okay, keep that in mind. If you felt one side was easier to turn towards, go ahead and roll onto that side of your body. So in your case, you'll roll onto your right side since turning left was easier. Got it. Rolling over now. Make yourself comfortable bending your knees so your legs are stacked one on top of the other. Okay. If your shoulder is uncomfortable, you can always place a pillow or a rolled up blanket under your ribs to create a bit of support. Okay. And again, let your eyes drift closed, soften your jaw, and just notice. How does it feel to be lying on the side? I feel um, surprisingly grounded, actually. Like my whole body feels heavier in a good way. Interesting. I'm already feeling calmer, and we haven't even gotten to the line of the heart part yet. And that's the beauty of awareness through movement. Sometimes just the act of slowing down and paying attention is enough to create a shift. Okay, so now what? Do I draw a line on myself or something? Not quite. Think of it more like an exploration with your touch. Okay. Extend your bottom arm out in front of you. Okay. And gently place your top hand on your bottom palm. Okay, so I'm lying on my right side, my bottom arm outstretched. Yes. What? Do I just pet it? Not exactly petting. Okay. But you're on the right track. Okay. Hey. Imagine your top hand is curious. Okay. And it's exploring the length of your bottom arm with this very light touch. Okay. So allow your body to move naturally with this exploration. Great. Maybe turning slightly forward as your top hand kind of glides towards your fingertips and then gently back as it returns to your palm. Okay, I'm doing it. <laughs> it does feel kind of nice, actually, like a mini massage. And as you do this, really notice. Does your breath change at all? Oh. Are you holding? Consciously soften your jaw, your eyes, even the muscles around your heart. Huh. You know, my breath is definitely a little deeper than it was a minute ago. Yeah. And yeah, I can feel some tension in my shoulders wanting to like creep right. in. Right. But when I consciously relax them, it's like my whole chest opens up a little. Exactly. Diana talks about how this touch can activate those energy lines, those meridians that connect the heart to the hands. Right. So see if you can tap into that sensation. Okay. Now, as your top hand explores your arm, allow it to continue across your chest towards your heart. Okay. You might find yourself gently moving your ribs, your sternum, maybe even feeling a release in those muscles around your heart. Take your time with this, letting your body guide you. Interesting. It does feel different to move my arm across my chest this way. Yeah. With that sense of gentle exploration. Like yeah. usually I'm rushing around, not really paying attention to how my body's moving. Right. But this is different. And just be aware of your eyes. Okay. Are they staying relaxed and soft, or are you fixing them on a point? Allowing your eyes to move freely with the movement can actually help you access more fluidity throughout your spine, your neck, even your jaw. Oh, yeah, you're right. My eyes were starting to bug out a little, trying to watch mm, my hand. Right. But when I soften my gaze, everything feels more connected. Exactly. Moshe Feldenkrais had this analogy about trying to kiss and smoke a cigarette at the same time. It just doesn't work. Right. If one part of your body is tense and fixed, it creates this kind of no in the system. Mm. It makes it harder for everything else to move freely. But when we allow for that softness, that gentle curiosity, it's amazing how much more ease we can find. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so I'm guessing we're going to do the other side now. Exactly. Now that you've explored one side, it's time to turn to the other side and see how things feel different. Remember, Awareness through movement is all about noticing those subtle variations, those nuances that make your body unique. So go ahead and roll onto your other side, making yourself comfortable with your knees bent and your legs stacked just like before. Okay, I'm on my left side now. How does that feel? And wow, just lying here, it already feels different than the other side. Interesting. Like my left hip feels a little more stuck i guess and that's perfectly normal okay our bodies aren't symmetrical right and that's okay just notice those differences without judgment okay now extend your bottom arm out in front of you 
and gently place your top hand on your bottom palm, just like we did on the other side. Got it. As you begin to explore the length of your bottom arm with that curious touch, pay attention to any differences you notice compared to the other side. Yeah, this side definitely feels tighter. It's harder to move my arm across my chest without feeling that resistance. And my breath feels a little more shallow on this side too. That's valuable information. It's not about judging yourself for those differences, okay. but rather about understanding your body's unique patterns. Okay. Maybe you tend to hold more tension on one side due to your work habits, your posture, even the way you sleep. The more aware you become of these patterns, the more empowered you are to make choices that support your well-being. So it's not about forcing my left side to feel exactly like my right side, but just about noticing those differences and maybe over time finding more balance. Exactly. Yeah. It's about working with your body's inherent wisdom, meeting yourself where you are in each moment. I like that. Now, as you continue exploring with your top hand, let it glide across your chest towards your heart. See if you can gently mobilize your ribs, your sternum, inviting that softness and openness in your heart space. Okay, doing that now. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how just slowing down and paying attention can make such a difference. Yeah. I didn't realize how much tension I was holding in my chest until I started to consciously let it go. And that's the power of awareness through movement. Yeah. It's not about achieving some perfect posture or forcing our bodies into submission. Right. It's about cultivating a sense of curiosity of gentle exploration, you know, of befriending our bodies rather than battling against them. I like the sound of that. Yeah. Befriending my body. Yeah. We could all use a little more of that. Right? Absolutely. And it's a lifelong practice, a journey of discovery that unfolds over time. Well said. So where does this journey take us next? Well, now that you've explored both sides with your arms, let's try initiating the movement from your legs instead. Okay. Roll back onto the side that felt easier to turn towards in your case, your right side. And this time, keep your arms resting comfortably at your sides. Okay. Focus your attention on your legs, specifically your top knee. Imagine that knee floating up towards the ceiling, gently peeling away from your bottom leg. Okay. You can place your top foot on your bottom ankle for support as you explore this movement. And notice, as your knee lifts, what happens in the rest of your body? Okay, I'm picturing my knee like a balloon. Okay. Just gently floating up towards the ceiling. Yeah. And whoa. What's happening? It does feel different to initiate the movement from my leg. Yeah. It's like I can feel the rotation in my spine more this way, starting all the way down to my tailbone. Precisely. And that's what's so fascinating about this work. Yeah. Feldenkrais saw the body through this lens of mechanics, of physics. Right. By changing where we initiate the movement, we're essentially shifting the leverage points in the system. Okay. Creating new possibilities for movement and change. So it's like finding those hidden levers that unlock a whole new range of motion. Exactly. So cool. And as you continue to explore, see if you can keep your breath flowing smoothly. Your jaw relaxed and your eyes soft. Got it. Smooth breaths, soft eyes, loose jaw. It's like a relaxation mantra. I love it. Okay, bringing my legs back together now. Yeah. And wow. Even just doing that one movement on each side, I can feel the difference. Yeah. Like my whole back feels longer, more spacious. And that's just the beginning. Right. Remember, awareness through movement is a practice. Yes. And the more you engage with it, the more you'll discover about your own unique patterns and possibilities. Okay. I'm ready for more. Ready for a bit more playfulness. Always. Excellent. This time, we're going to combine the arm and leg movements, exploring how they can work together to create a more fluid and integrated experience of turning. Ooh, sounds intriguing. Yeah. Like putting all the pieces together. Exactly. It's about finding that sweet spot where the movement feels effortless, almost like a dance. Okay, I'm picturing myself in this graceful waltz with my own body. I love it. Lead the way. So roll onto that easier side again, your right side. Okay. And see if you can visualize the movement in your mind before you actually start moving. Okay. Imagine your top arm floating up towards the ceiling, your eyes following his path. Okay. And then as it reaches its peak, your top knee begins to lift and turn away from your bottom leg. Okay, visualizing it now. Arm reaching, eyes following, knee lifting. Got it. Okay. What's next? Now bring that visualization to life. Okay. You can play with the timing of the movements. Okay. Letting the arm lead the leg or the leg lead the arm. Okay. Or maybe they move together. Okay. Creating a more synchronized wave-like motion. Explore different variations, noticing what feels most fluid, most satisfying for your body. Okay. 
you might find that certain combinations access different parts of your spine, mm. creating a sense of length, openness, and ease that you haven't felt before. Okay, so I'm basically conducting my own little movement symphony here. Exactly. And remember, there's no one right way to do this. Let your curiosity be your guide. Got it. As you play with these movements, see if you can bring a sense of playfulness to the exploration. Okay. Imagine you're a child again, discovering the joy of movement for the first time. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It's so easy to get caught up in the shoulds of movement. Right. Like, I should be more flexible, or I should be able to do this pose. But when we approach it with that childlike sense of play, it takes the pressure off and allows for more joy, more discovery. Exactly. And that sense of playfulness is key because it helps us move out of our habitual patterns. Okay. Those ingrained ways of moving and being that can sometimes feel so limiting. I'm definitely feeling that shift already. Yeah. It's amazing how just changing my perspective can change the whole experience. And that's what awareness through movement is all about. Yeah. Shifting our perspective, expanding our awareness, and discovering the incredible potential that lies within our own bodies. Love it. Now, as you continue exploring, you might find yourself naturally rolling onto your back, your arms and legs spreading out wide, as Diana mentioned in the session. Huh. If that happens, let yourself rest in that position for a while. It's a beautiful way to allow your body to fully release and integrate the effects of the movements. Okay, I'm going to lie back now. Okay. But this time, it's not just because we're moving on to the next part of the deep dive. Right. It's because my body actually wants to lie back and soak it all in. And that's a perfect place to pause. Just take a moment to be present with the sensations in your body. As you rest, imagine sending your breath to any areas that feel tight or restricted. Visualizing that space, expanding with each inhale, and softening with each exhale. Okay. Notice what's happening in your mind. Okay. Are your thoughts calmer? Yeah. Do you feel a sense of spaciousness, a sense of lightness that wasn't there before? Wow, I do. It's like this whole practice has created more space, both physically and mentally. Right. I'm actually surprised by how relaxed and grounded I feel. And that's the power of these subtle yet profound movements. Yeah. They work on a deep level to release tension, calm the nervous system, and unlock a greater sense of ease and well-being. This has been incredible. Right. But I can't help but wonder, how does this translate into everyday life? Right. How can these movements help me navigate the stress of deadlines, holiday shopping, and family gatherings? Excellent question. We're going to dive into that and more when we come back. Okay, I am ready to bring this home. Yes. We've explored this line of the heart. We felt the difference on each side of our bodies. We even added in some leg action. It's amazing, right. But how do we take this, like, off the yoga mat? Right. And into the real world, you know, where the to-do lists and, like, yeah. holiday traffic lurk. That's the million-dollar question, right. <laughs> but honestly, I think that's what's so brilliant about awareness through movement. It's not about adding more to our already packed lives. It's about finding ways to access this sense of ease and presence within the busyness. So it's less about mastering this whole routine and more about having these little tools. Yes. These like micro movements we can pull out whenever we need them. Exactly. Think of it like this. Remember how we were talking about the parasympathetic nervous system? Right. It's that, you know, beautiful built-in system that helps us rest, digest, de-stress, like hitting the brakes on our stress response. Yeah, like the opposite of that fight or flight. Yeah. That feeling of go, go, go. Exactly. That seems to take over this time of year. And what we've been exploring with these movements is really how to like consciously activate that parasympathetic nervous system to shift our bodies out of that stress response and into a state of relaxation, of receptivity. Okay, so how do we actually do that? Like, mm -hmm. let's say I'm, like, stuck in holiday traffic. Right. Feeling my blood pressure rising. Yeah. Am I supposed to pull over and start, like, doing the line of the heart in the driver's seat? Well, you could. Okay. But even just a simplified version can make a difference. Remember those eye movements we started with? Yeah, the, like gentle gazing from side to side. Yes. It's like I'm like looking for my inner ear. Exactly. That simple act of softening your gaze and allowing your eyes to move freely, it can actually send signals to your nervous system to relax. You can do it anywhere, anytime. At your desk, in line at the grocery store, even in the middle of a family dinner if things start to feel a little tense. Okay, that's like that's something I can actually manage. Yeah. Even in the midst of holiday chaos. Yeah. Um are there other like 
micro movements that we can use. Absolutely. Remember how Diana talked about the importance of softening the jaw? We uh, tend to hold so much tension there without even realizing it. It's true. So the next time you feel yourself clenching, try gently bringing your lips together. Okay. As if you're about to give a little kiss, that gentle pucker. Okay. And hold it for a few breaths. It's amazing how something so subtle can create such a noticeable shift. I've been doing it throughout this whole deep dive. Yeah. And my jaw actually feels less tense than it did before we started. Who knew? It's often the simplest things that have the most profound effects. So true. And here's the best part. Okay. The more you practice these micro movements, yeah. the more attuned you become to your body's signals. Okay. You start to notice the tension before it becomes overwhelming. And you have the tools to address it before it turns into stress, overwhelm, or even illness. That's incredible. It's like we're not just learning, like, movements. We're learning a whole new way of, like, listening to and caring for ourselves. Yes. And that's a gift that keeps on giving. Yes. Long after the holidays are over. Exactly. It's about reclaiming that connection with our bodies, that innate wisdom that's always there waiting to be heard. I love that. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the line of the heart and, like, the power of awareness through movement, what's the one thing you want our listener to remember? You know, I think the most important takeaway here is this. You have the power to change your state at any moment. It doesn't require hours of meditation or these expensive retreats. Th those can be lovely too. It's about cultivating a sense of awareness in your everyday life, noticing how your body feels, and having a few simple tools to shift your energy when you need it most. Beautifully said. So to our listeners, we really encourage you to keep exploring, play with these movements, notice what you discover, and most importantly, be kind to yourself along the way. Until next time, keep diving deep.